Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and this is Pinstripe by Thomas Brush. Pinstripe is a 2D action adventure puzzler developed and published by Atmos Games. Atmos Games is a single man studio of, you guessed it, Thomas Brush. It released in 2017 on PC for $15. In Pinstripe, you take control of Teddy, an apparent father of a church that attempts to get his daughter back from the evil Mr. Pinstripe, who abducted her early in the game. Regarding its art style, I've noticed that indie horror games have done an excellent job in stylizing their games, and that the first thing you'll notice in Pinstripe is how interesting and beautiful its art style is. You're put into an eerie snow hellscape populated by semi-normal people with odd traditions, and I found the game's art style to be one of the more impressive parts of it. Its 2D winter, almost water paint look made it seem foggy and cold, which further drove home Pinstripe's eerie mysticism. Like many indie games with a dark edgy undertone, Pinstripe gives a careful thread to follow as the player realizes the game's symbolic meaning. This is normally done by making symbolism vague and hard to understand, thus making the player make several run-throughs in hopes of uncovering more snippets of the hidden narrative. The fans will additionally, and or alternatively, engage with fan theories from the community of the game in order to better understand it. Pinstripe has gone the classier route in my opinion. Rather than presenting a narrative that is difficult to understand, Pinstripe balances symbolism and foreshadowing and context items to spin an understandable narrative. Even if the narrative mostly goes over the head of the player the first time, its ending is on the nose enough, perhaps too much, to make a second playthrough more understandable. In fact, even if you understand the main thrust of the story the first time, a second playthrough will likely bring a new appreciation to its story as you fill out the clues that were originally unnoticed. Pinstripe clearly encourages this, as it gives you a new game plus option that gives you ample amounts of currency, allowing you to finish the game with little effort, which means you can enjoy the game's story a second time without worrying about the puzzles or enemies. Unfortunately, this is where the praise of the game comes to the end. Though the rest of the components aren't bad, they aren't high quality either. Let's talk about the game's story first. Pinstripe is about a two hour long game, and that makes it difficult to spend a deep narrative around it. It doesn't well enough, but it's very on the nose at many points, and it didn't have time to breadcrumb a proper aha moment to the player. I'm not saying it's bad, just the noting that the story arc would have been magnitudes better if it had more time and assets to play with. The gameplay is the weakest part of the game. It's a 2D schooler where you use your mouse to shoot and alternatively you can use a gamepad to fight enemies. The fighting and physics in the game work, but the combat of all, and I mean all the hostiles, was incredibly simplistic to the point where no challenge was ever found in any of the game's fights, including the bosses. The puzzles were very pleasant and had a wide range of variation for a two hour game. There were many different types including point and click logic puzzles that never used moon logic. There was also a few more traditional puzzles, like find the difference in between two pictures, but nothing original to the game. For many of the adventure puzzles, you'll have to look for various clues and items you have picked up in your items menu. You can look at your items in, of course, the item menu, where you'll be able to examine them as a three-dimensional object. I bring this up because I found it difficult to control my mouse to rotate any given item in this menu, so something you may want to know. Pinstripe has some very powerful friends in the YouTube community that allowed it to get a fair amount of Kickstarter backers. Pinstripe also uses many popular YouTube celebrities to voice act characters in the game, such as the voices of PewDiePie and Japsecticeye. But most notably, Nathan Sharp from Nate Wants to Battle voices the dog, who ghosts the main character as their mentor slash voice, like Navi in Zelda. So for all intents and purposes, he's the star voice actor. I can go into a launch spiel breaking apart what worked and what didn't between the writing and the performance, but they're B-class voice actors, and they did a B rate job. Some moments were actually well stilted and memorable, and a few moments were not very good at all. But it is better the game had them rather than not have them. If you like hearing your favorite YouTuber's voice in a game, it's something you may want to think about. But that all being said, if you're looking for a dark and short game with enjoyable puzzles that has a narrative that is elaborate enough to be interesting, but not so elaborate it's unintelligible, then Pinstripe is the game for you.